become a social media user, a socialist. So first of all, for your companies and yourself, for selves, yourselves, you need to perfect your profiles. Okay? Uh, many people's profiles suck. Your avatar <laughs> is a crappy picture. We should bring everybody's avatar up right now. We'll continue to. So I'll tell you how you make a great avatar. A great avatar, well, for your company, it's your logo. But for yourself, it's your face. Only your face. It's not you, your entire body, standing next to your car, standing next to your tennis racket, holding your dog, next to your spouse, any of that. It is your face. Okay? Your face, the light should come from the front, not the back. Your face should not be cropped out of a group photo that you happen to have found on your cell phone. Okay? You need to spend two minutes to make a great photo of your face from the front, in focus, front lit, because it is how people are going to judge whether to follow you. So you need to perfect your profile. Then the cover photo, that big photo behind your avatar, that's where you tell your story. You tell your story about what your passions are, what your interests are. But face, cover, very different. Next thing is you need to embrace what I call the NPR model. And the NPR model is this. Uh, in the United States, there's National Public Radio. National Public Radio does not have any advertising. So the way they make money is they ask for donations. And they do what's called the pledge drive. So every few months, they run a pledge drive. And after the regular programming, they have this really sort of disruptive, kind of, it's actually painful. Uh, they, they have this pledge drive where they, they interrupt the program and they say, well, we're in the middle of our pledge drive, and we'd like you to donate to NPR. Your donation will make our continuing creation of content possible. Operators are standing by, calling with your credit cards. Please donate to NPR. And it happens every few months. And it's really disruptive, it's kind of painful. Um, but NPR gets away with it. And in fact, NPR succeeds with it. And the reason why NPR succeeds with it is because NPR has created such great content all year long that Americans feel obligated to support the source of their free content. Okay? That's what you need to do. You need to provide such great content that people feel obligations to try your product, to try your service, and hopefully to buy your product or service. Because you're adding value to their lives. And so the deal is, you give me great content, I'll at least try what you do. So if you look at my social media platform, if you look at my Facebook, Google Plus, and Twitter, I am constantly curating. Like, some of it is automated, some of it is people's doing it for me. If you look at my accounts right now, I guarantee you that there are four or five stories that have been posted in the last hour that are links to what I consider interesting and an analysis, assistance, entertainment. Somehow I'm trying to make your life better. Okay? I'm trying to provide you stuff that you would not have the time to find. Okay? And in exchange for that, all I ask is that when I come out with a new book, you consider buying the book or you use Canon. That's my deal. I find you great stuff. You check out what I do. Okay? Now, I'm my asking you, my promotion is one out of 20. NPR does not run the pledge drive every day. NPR runs the pledge drive a few weeks a year. Okay? So embrace the NPR model. The last thing is to pass the reshare test. And what I mean by this is everything you post on social media, ask yourself, will the people who get it then share it to their followers? Is it that good? All right? So to use a restaurant analogy, uh, you could tip a waiter or a waitress. That's nice of you to do. But it really, it's, it's not a statement to the public that you like this restaurant. It's, it's, in America anyway, because tipping practices around the world are different, in America it's just a nice way of saying thank you for your service, you know, thank you for the food. Um, and it, just about everybody tips except kind of like sociopaths, okay? Um, but it's not a public display of support of the restaurant. So there's tipping. But there's also, I love this restaurant so much, I went into the office the next day and I told all my colleagues, you've got to eat at this restaurant. Or I went to Yelp and I gave it a five star rating. Okay? That is the research test. Is your content so good that
that not only are people liking it, thumbs up, plus ones, but are they taking your content and resharing it to their friends? That's the test. Because if people reshare your content, then you get more exposure, you get more exposure, you get more followers, you get more followers, then social media becomes a more powerful platform. And you want social media to be as powerful a platform as possible because it's fast and it's free and it's ubiquitous. Next thing is to see the clouds. Um, in America, we have this saying that uh, a rainmaker is someone who gets sales, basically, right? And so this is about making sales. So this is a, a thought I stole from Chairman Mao, uh, although I failed to see how he implemented it. Uh, letting 100 flowers blossom means that at the start of a company, you may think you know exactly how people should use your product, and lo and behold, they may use it in very different ways, and they may not even be your intended customer. And so you have to let 100 flowers blossom. You know, we thought Macintosh would be a spreadsheet database over a processing machine. Turns out it was a desktop open machine. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Take the money. Take the money. Okay. Next thing is to enable test drives. Basically, you're saying to people, I think you're smart. And because I think you're smart, I'm not going to try to bludgeon you into becoming a customer. I'm going to enable you to try my product. You can use Evernote for a while. You can use Dropbox. You know, at some point, if you exceed our free storage, you go to the next level with Evernote. You go to the next level with Dropbox. Uh, somehow enable people to test drive. You can use my app for 30 days. You can use my site for 30 days. Somehow let them try it. The next thing is to find the key influencers. Many people assume that the influencers are, again, top down. I think it's bottom up. That lonely boy 15 at AOL.com may make you tick, right? It's not the Wall Street Journal. It's a bunch of lonely boy 15s. And if lonely boy 15 is the key to your success, then you have to really, really cover the earth with your software, with your product. Because it's very easy to identify who at the Wall Street Journal. It's very hard to find lonely boy 15 at AOL.com. Nobody knows who he or she is. Tenth thing is don't let the bozos grind you down. The bozos are the people who are going to tell you it can't be done, it shouldn't be done, it isn't necessary. So tell your students, you know what? Fine, solicit feedback. Okay? Use the feedback to fine tune what you do. But don't let people tell you what you are trying to do is impossible. That what you're trying to do cannot be done, shouldn't be done, isn't necessary. I wish I could tell you every time somebody says it can't be done, shouldn't be done, isn't necessary, it means you will succeed. It's not that simple. But if you listen to those people and never try, then you will never know. And as a student, that is the worst case. So I'm going to give you some examples of naysaying that proved to be wrong. Okay? So IBM chairman said there was a market for five computers in the world. I have five Macs in my house. Right? <laughs> I have all the computers in the world in my house today. <laughs> so imagine if you were an entrepreneur, you're thinking of making a personal computer, and you see Thomas Watson, and he says, well, you know what? IBM has one, so that's 20% of the world, right? So you get the other four. That's the total size of the market. This telephone has too many shortcomings to be seriously considered as a means of communication. The device is inherently of no value to us. Western Union internal memo. Western Union today should be Bitcoin. It should be PayPal. It should be Square. But it's hard to be Bitcoin or PayPal or Square if you write off telephones. <laughs> Hard to make that crossing the chasm. Next thing is don't, there's no reason why anyone would want a computer in their home. Uh, Ken Olson said this. He was very successful on the mini computer curve. He could not embrace the personal computer curve. Again, imagine if you're Steve or Waz and you met Ken Olson at Comdex or CES and Ken Olson told you nobody will use a computer at home. And you said, yes, Mr. Olson, you're right. I'll just keep making mainframe software right, or mini computer software. Be no apple today. So uh, I believe that this kind of naysaying, what I call bozosity, from bozos, uh, there are two kinds of bozos in the world. One bozo is obviously a loser, you know, disgusting, pocket protector, Japanese watch, rusty car, clearly a loser. That bozo is not dangerous because that bozo is easy to ignore. Nobody listens to a loser but a loser. That's not a dangerous bozo. The dangerous bozo dresses in all black, owns lots of things that end in I, like Ferrari, Armani, Maserati, Lamborghini, 
Um, Audi is an exception. Audi is okay. <laughs> and, and so you look at that person, you think, oh, rich and famous must be smart. Right? Rich and famous equals smart. But rich and famous, I'll tell you, often is lucky, not smart. Right? So, you know, would you listen to Tom Cruise about what religion to pick? I don't know. <laughs> would you listen to Kim Kardashian about how to raise a child? I don't think so. <laughs> so why would you listen to somebody who's so successful on the, let's say, letter quality printer curve about laser printers. If you ask brother, great letter quality printer company, what do you think of laser printers? What do you think they're going to say? Oh, that's fantastic. You should like not buy our letter, our brother printer with the you know type thing that you change. Of course, you know, you should jump to the next curve. If you ask Western Union, well, what do you think about telephones? They say, ah, telephones. Well, why would you use a telephone? We telegraphs. We'll just train everybody on the Morse code. How hard could that be, right? Um, so that's why you need to learn to, or you need to teach your students to learn to ignore naysayers. But again, I wish I could tell you every time somebody says it won't work, it means it will. It's not true either. But if you listen, listen to naysayers and never try, you will truly never, ever know. Okay? And this is the gist of Artist Star 2.0. Now you don't need to buy the book. Um, <laughs> but you're not going to buy the book anyway, because I need to. So uh, that's the Art of the Star 2.0. Thank you. Oh. So now we can do questions. <laughs>